Hi YouTube, it's Ivy, and today I thought I would walk you guys through a quick method for how to use layer blend modes to color your pieces without making them look too dull. So today's topic is about using overlay layers for shading. And you might have heard or found on your own already that it's best to stay away from using blend modes to shade and highlight your pictures. And honestly, it's discouraged, sort of like using dodge and burn tools. Uh, and there's a good reason for that. Often the colors will come out looking too flat because typically they only work in one hue and you won't get the color variation that you want to make a piece actually look good. But there are some easy tricks you can learn that will quickly set you on the track to a fully shaded piece. And that's what I'm going to walk you through today. Now I'm using Photoshop, but most of these layer blending modes are available across a lot of different programs, including Procreate and Clip Studio, probably more, but I don't use them, so I don't know. <laughs> if you have an overlay layer, you're probably good. Um, I do want to go into this with a quick disclaimer that these tools are super convenient and easy, but it also is very helpful to do actual color studies and use reference so you can still learn how shading like actually <laughs> is supposed to work. Um, but it doesn't hurt to know some shortcuts, so let's do it. <laughs> First, let's talk about the science of overlay layers. An overlay layer is in the category of contrast layers, and essentially it does just what contrast implies. It makes darks darker and lights lighter. It also applies color. So think of 50% brightness gray as the ultimate neutral. So I could create a new solid color. It would be 50% brightness. So this would be kind of the ultimate neutral gray. So if you set this layer to overlay, it's not going to do anything because it's just, it's not, there's no contrast to apply. It's just good. But as you get lighter, it goes lighter. And if you get darker, it goes darker. And you can also apply some color to it. So as you go over here, you know, it gets really red or it gets really dark or, you know, everywhere in between, but just knowing that this 50% brightness is your true neutral and nothing below that is going to change. Like it can't affect anything with overlay layers for here. And then the farther you get away from that, the more things start to change and apply. So we can use this to shade. So um, in this scenario, I have a lined piece and I've done what are called basic flats. And this is purely the color of the item itself, discounting shading. So, you know, there's nothing. It's just flat. <laughs> so I have my flats and then I would create another layer um, and do all my shading in grayscale. Oh, so let's set this to normal so you can see how this looks. So I know that all the gray that is at 50% is not going to affect anything below it, right? Um, and then the darker it goes, the more contrast it's going to pull out that is, you know, darker. So you might think like, you're still shading manually, why or how is this a time saver? Um, but you're taking the guesswork out of color picking when you're doing this this way. So you're letting the computer do a chunk of the hard part. So when you're shading in grayscale, it's usually easier because you can have a lot of more consistency across the whole piece and you don't have to switch around your colors and layers. So it's really easier to do in fewer layers. Like you don't have to do them individually. You can kind of shade the whole piece in one go and it just, can be a lot quicker. So I have my shading layer now, as well as my flats. So let's change the shading layer to overlay. Okay. So this is a step in the right direction and it did shade some stuff, but overlay layers on top rely on having sort of a neutral color below it. So while it turned out really good in areas that the brightness is around 50%, which is kind of that neutral area that it will apply to, Things that are like lighter, especially, um, don't really have that much shading. So like in here, well, I didn't really apply a lot of shading, but like around her face, especially, there's not as much shading as I would want there, right? So if you had a very light picture, this wouldn't really look very good. So let me add a curves adjustment so I can kind of show you an example of what it would look like if you were using 
a lighter piece with flats. So you can see that the shading isn't really applying very much because there's no base for the contrast to apply to. So this doesn't look great, but let's try and mess with the order of these overlay layers so we can get an effect we want. So right now I have my flats below my overlay layer, but what happens if we switch these two? Let's, let's try that. So I'm going to duplicate this layer and put it below my flats. And I'm going to hide this overlay layer that's here right now and turn this overlay layer to normal. So now we have the shading below the flat colors. So if we turn this flat color to an overlay layer, now we also have shading, but in a really different way. So now let me flip that back around so again you can see with the layers swapped. So that's with the overlay layer on top of the flat colors. And this is with the flat colors as an overlay layer on top of the shading. Does that make sense? <laughs> I hope so. There is a lot more shading applied evenly. So we have this very like, you know, there's a lot more shading in this section here. However, it's quite lifeless. There hasn't been any increase in contrast for the color. So it's just very dull and gray and also kind of not the best effect. So let's use a combo of these two different methods to find a happy medium in between. So what I've done here is I have one background layer that is 50% brightness. It is the true neutral gray. And then on top of that, I have just a normal layer that is the shading. So I would, let's say, decrease this a little bit. Let's put it around, you know, around here. So it's not as intense, but it's still creating a whole effect shading on this flats layer. So I set this flats layer to overlay, but because I reduced the opacity of the shading layer, it's a lot less intense. But now that we have a little bit of shading below it, that gives the overlay layer on top that's shading a little something more to cling to. So it's not trying to add contrast to white because that's hard to do. It's just too bright. There's a little bit of a neutral gray. So the addition of those shadows looks a lot better. So that's without this bottom one. See, it, it it's like a lot lighter in here. It's kind of not, it doesn't have anything to attach to. But once you bring it up to a little bit more neutral, now we really have some shading going. And I think this one, this top overlay layer is a little bit intense. So I'm also going to bring this down just a little bit. So we kind of have this nice neutral shading right now. So now that I've added some shading, I'm seeing that it's pretty grayscale. Like the shadows don't have any color to them, which is kind of why burn and dodge tools are discouraged because we're not introducing any like cool ambient lighting that actually makes a picture look good, right? Like we do have shadows, but they're not interesting. So this is where you can start to get into some other things to make that happen. So first things first, one of the easiest and quickest ways to get some color variation and make things interesting is using a curves layer, at least in Photoshop and others, you might have to curve the whole image. But with Photoshop, you can just create a curves um, adjustment layer. So with this, this is the RGB channel. So this is going to affect just kind of the values of the piece if this, if you're affecting this channel. So like, you know, it's getting brighter here, darker here, but you can drop this down and affect the individual channels like red, green, and blue. And so there's some different ways that you can get into this and change the colors. Um, again, this is kind of a, there's a science to this. So this might vary on the picture and what colors you want. But for example, for this piece, I would say, well, I want the, I want my shadows to be green and I want my light and highlight to be more purple. So if I were to do that, I would go into the green channel. And if I brought this down, okay, the whole piece is getting more purple because I'm taking the green out of it. And if I'm going this way, okay, it's getting more green. 
because I'm adding green to it. So this is just with one point, but if you add a second point, it changes. So this is saying I'm going to bring the shadows down into green, but the lighting is going to get more purple. So you can mess with these layers in combination and kind of bring a cohesive color into it because you are shading or you're adding color into the shadows and the highlights. So it adds a lot more interesting effect very quickly. So I could again, okay, I've changed the green channel. So now I'm going to change the blue. I want a little more blue in there. I want a little more yellow in my highlights. And you can go the other way too, um, which adds a little more contrast. So, okay, now my highlights are getting more uh, blue and <laughs> my shadows are getting more yellow. Um, and it's just interesting to play with all of these combinations to kind of see what lighting you like for whatever mood you're going for. So this is without, and this is once we've added a curves layer. So we're introducing color into those shadows and that's already adding a lot of intrigue, but we can go even further than that as well. Now I'm going to try to introduce even more interest in shading with a gradient adjustment. Now, I don't, <laughs> I don't think the Clip Studio has this yet. I'm hoping that at some point this gets added to both Procreate and Clip Studio and other programs. Um, but for now, at least Photoshop has it, which is great. It's super useful. So let me introduce you to this awesome tool and how it can be used with overlay layers like this to shade and get some really awesome color variation in there. So I'm going to copy this shading layer where all of my um, shadows are. It looks really freaky without the line art. I know, sorry about that. Um, and here we are going to uh, introduce you to a gradient map layer. So what it does basically is it creates, um, it generates from the values in your picture a gradient and makes everything the same color. So right now it's starting with white at the lightest. So all of my lighter values are going to be white and then my darkest is going to be this red color. So we can change this. So for example, if I made this black and white, it's exactly the same pretty much. But for this, I want to say, let's see, I want my shadows to be more hmm, green. We'll, we'll stick with this. I'll go with a green. And then, so I want my darkest points to be this green but I want there to be kind of a middle ground. So this point, I want again, a pink. So it's going from pink into green within the shadow. And that is gonna create a lot of interesting color variation and it looks really cool. But right now, if you just applied this, it would be really bright. So I'm going to again, make this part the 50% very true neutral gray and we can move these little tabs around to change where this is affected. Now, <laughs> you might think this looks freaky and it kind of does, but it's part of the experimentation. And also once you start learning more about how the overlay layers themselves work, it's gonna make a lot more sense. So right now I know that this true neutral is not going to affect anything and the purple will. I'm actually gonna make this a little darker. So you can see that it goes from something that's not going to be affected into a purple and then a green. You can add more a variation to this as well. Like I could add a very dark blue even deeper in here. So now we have even another color introduced. Let's just see how that looks. So if I set this gradient map as a clipping mask, on this shading layer and then I set the shading layer to overlay we're again gonna get a really interesting effect now right now I think this looks a bit extreme but that is exactly where you can go back in here and mess with all of these colors to get all kinds of interesting colors introduced and find something you really like
And of course you can also mess with the intensity and bring this down a little bit or whatever. You can also not keep this as true neutral and say, okay, now I want this to be more pink. So there's a lot to mess with there, but it's going to give you a really interesting base for shading. Now I would say don't count on this to get you all the way there. For me, this is a starting point, but it generates a really interesting base for me to then go in and do individual shading, add more colors, smooth things out, etc. But you can already see with some very easy steps, look how cool this shadow is. We have this highlight that is purple, and then it goes into this really cool teal green shadow, and that looks awesome. And it's applied across the whole piece, which gives a really cohesive look. And we went from, <laughs> you know, just this basic flats into a really cool shading piece to start with really quickly. So that's why I love these kinds of blending modes. And of course, it's not a replacement for the fundamentals, but it can really get you going in the right direction. All right, guys. Well, I hope that you learned something from this or at least started thinking about some cool ways that we can use blending layers and styles to speed up our workflow and make some really awesome art as fast as possible. Because if these tools are available to you, you might as well use them. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.